Hello folks, this is Susan and I want to talk about Jeremiah 3. My spiritual eyes see Paul and Jeremiah on a regular basis, on a regular basis, and I see God's glory all the time. Now, I want you to know that the letter N is for number and also the letter N is none in ancient languages. And when our Father God asked Moses to pick a leader in the community to continue um, with Moses' job, because Moses was getting old and Moses was not going to be able to enter the promised land in that, not that he wasn't gonna go to heaven, that's not what it means. It means that he was going to be done with his job, but that he was not going to be able to see, you know, the, 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 the payoff. But the, God said, you're doing a good job. You just need to pick somebody else to continue because it's time to pass the baton, the staff. And Moses picked Joshua. Joshua is Yeshua, Yeshua. It's yes, hua. Remember that God has an army. And we are part of that army because we've already been lifted. We have been given. We were forgiven and we were given more for our less and we're coming down. Coming down, we ourselves are the temple. We ourselves are the new Jerusalem. We ourselves are the blueprint for others because the life is a cycle. So it's time for us to come back down and deliver to the rest of the body that we're part of so that they can continue to survive as a humanity. <clears throat> so this is why in Jeremiah it says that we're not going to be talking about the ark anymore and in the book of Revelation 21 it says that we're not going to be um, you're not going to see a temple the, we're not going to see a temple because we ourselves are the temple see this already happened it'll manifest itself when we see it because it's already happened So, um, Jeremiah and Paul have been here with me this whole time to help me because I lack, I lack, um, I didn't go to school to study about the Bible, but I had my Bible, but I didn't go to school to study about the Bible. Or about the Word of God or nobody had to teach me I just was led by just pure faith and my Papa God gives me what I need and I am so excited because I want y'all to know that we have been forgiven we are the body of Christ see Jesus said to the Samaritan woman in, in John, um, he said, woman, and I love it how he said it just like that. I mean, y'all think that Jesus, you know what? Jesus was realistic. He said to the woman, he said, woman, the Samaritan woman, he said, one day you're not going to be praising God up in Jerusalem, you know, or on some mountain. God, it, it, you know, it, he, he, he's looking for people who are going to Praise Him in spirit and in truth. And this goes to show you that Jeremiah 3 is saying the same message as Revelation 21. Revelation 21, you know, John is like, I, I didn't see a, a temple. You know, we, we are ourselves the temple. Isn't that exciting? 
Now we're not going to be talking about all oh, the ark and the ark because remember that we are the body. We were lifted up, up, up into his heart. And that's when our transformation occurred between the three and the four. Okay. So we've got four points um, of, an, of, a, of a, a cross. The cross is the letter X, is the letter T, or the letter T, and that's the last letter for the Jews. This is why Jesus said salvation is from the Jews, because if we don't understand the Jews and their, their alphabet and the meaning of every word, we're not going to ever understand the Word of God. Remember that we, the Gentiles, are going to be um, joined to Judah, to the stick of Judah. Because the stick of Judah was the original branch. The tree was cut because of Judah's idolatry and Judah's, you know, just shenanigans back in the days. And Papa God is like, no, 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 no. No, we're going to start fresh because that's how much God loves us. And then, he, you know, it was predicted that one day the, 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 the shoot of, the, the, the root of Jesse you know, there's a shoot that's going to come out of it. A little branch. And the Gentiles, because of God's mercy on us, it's like, don't worry. You are also part of Israel. You are the other descendants, and you're going to be attached to become one with Judah. Because Judah and Joseph and Ephraim and Benjamin and all of the 12 tribes, remember, in the book of Romans 11, in book of Romans 11, 25 through 36, and Romans 12, um, Paul says, all of Israel will be saved. And this is my message to the churches because my papa told me, you know, lay down, calm down, Open your mouth, and I declared in the name of Jesus Christo when I saw the little lights. And then he said, my eyes were still closed. He said, turn on the light, you know, and, and I had already opened my book. He said, turn on the light, oh, open your eyes and read my daughter. And it was in my native tongue that he wanted me to speak. The, the This is my message to the churches in my native tongue. And had I not spoken Spanish and had to teach myself English, I probably would not have been able to figure all this out because my papa, I'm not intelligent because, oh my gosh, I'm so intelligent. No, everything that God gives me is for me to share with you. Everything. Except for my privacy of my privacy. I'm not going to be sharing, you know, my going to the restroom with y'all. I'm sorry. Nobody needs to learn anything about how Susan Valerina goes to the potty or take a shower. No. Eso se llama sinvergüenzura de ustedes. Lo que quiero decir es que si yo no hubiese aprendido el inglés e intentando, buscándolo en el diccionario y esas cosas, no hubiese yo podido tener las, las herramientas que necesitaba yo para aprender lo poco que necesité aprender, que eran las palabras en, en ciertas palabras en hebreo y ciertas palabras en esos idiomas antiguos, que de ahí vinieron todas las, todos los idiomas tan bonitos que tenemos. So, what I was just saying is that had I not taught myself English to, in order to, you know, write a letter, I often had a, a dictionary or Google and I, you know, look through the, the dictionary to make sure. But because of that pattern, I was able to, you know, to, to learn some Hebrew words and the meaning behind these Hebrew words and the, the, go all the way back to the 
first languages because that's where all the languages originated in our conflicts in the in the the world here on earth that we ourselves cause is due to lack of communication or or just um out of fear of not having something to you know so you feel like okay so i'm running out of resources or money or i'm running out of food or i'm running out of something so i'm gonna have to go you know steal from my brother you know or conquer and take over their land and because people have they don't understand that god provides god provides for the birds and the animals you don't you know the animals only kill when they absolutely have to you don't see animals gossiping and animals plotting war no they only kill out of necessity you know because it's the, the food chain but our food chain is not other humans our food chain the our shenanigans is our shenanigans because of our disrespect disbelief distrust toward god and he's the only one we should trust a hundred and ten percent you know because you can trust your neighbor trust is very important among us but this is why god says i i will one day we're not going to be talking about it we are going to be god is going to be or he is in us because we're the body of christ and the 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 ark of the covenant the ark is is a box like a treasure box if you will because that's where all the treasures right were stored and all of these things are already built in us our heart is a chest is a if we're going to be breaking it down ark is a box when you refer to the heart is like a box or or a chest chest box okay our transformation occurred between the three and the four and if we don't understand jews then then we miss everything the message this is a message for all for all it's a promise that god has promised his children this is the land of your inheritance but see as above so below okay so between jeremiah 3 and jeremiah 31 and romans 11 25 through 36 and all of romans 12 and the book of revelation 21 It talks about these things in the book of jeremiah says you know we're, we're not going to be talking about the ark in the book of revelation 21 we're not going to see a temple jesus tells the samaritan woman woman one day we're not going to be praising god up in a mountain or or in jerusalem god we're going to be praising god you know um, in spirit and in truth because we are the body of Christ as a humanity we all have our gifts and our role to play in the body okay the body of humanity one one people one human race not as in like okay you're white or black it doesn't matter you are different parts of the body so your eye doesn't look like your mouth it's still the same person but just like chinese people look different than black people or white people look different than the native american people that's because we're the different important parts of the whole body of humanity until we realize that we're so small we, we're like you know if you ever saw these cells under the microscope um you know you would understand that's how small we are this is why we need to understand that we're the body of humanity because it's like one body with tiny 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 little cells doing their jobs 
That's how we are. If we don't see ourselves the way we are, we're not going to get it right. So this is why we have to go into the micro before we can understand the macro. Because it's like, you know, heaven looks so far away when we're far away from God, but then we were lifted up because of His most mercy. Okay? So when we go up, 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 it's like a mirror image, right? And then we went into Him and He into us. That's where our transformation occurred. We went up, up, up to the right, and that's Gamma. And from the inside, it looks like Dalit. We went up, up, up into He. Okay, through Gamma, Dalit. Through that door, that portal that opened up into He. Which is letter H, which is letter E, which is five, for Greeks and Jews. Unless we, we understand and we start talking about math and science, I, I told you all I was going to prove God to you. Um, I wasn't bluffing. No. When my ex-husband said to me, Lacey Fab B-I-T-C-H, I said, excuse me. I'm going to lose the weight and I'm going to lose it. And I got down to a size zero. And that's why my papa said, I have faith in this little girl because even though I'm not little, I'm 47 years old. I'm just, I'm just honored that God has chosen me and you because all of you all have a, remember, it says in the book of Romans that that is a book of Romans? No. It's one of those books that Paul wrote. Because Paul wrote and wrote and wrote all of that he knew. Okay? So, we only have so much time physically to get it done. This is why it's so important. Because we all have a hymn. We all have a song. We all have a message. We all have a tongue. We all have an interpretation. We all have it. So when I say me, I don't mean me as in selfish and self-centered. No, I mean as in I am just a small part of the whole body of humanity. You understand who we are? We are God's children. That's why son, sons, daughters. Same thing. Okay, so you know that Zion is also Jerusalem. And there's going to be a transformation, a new everything, right? New Jerusalem. And who's the bride coming down? Jerusalem. You see who we are, folks. We are the son, the daughter of God. We are that one. Son of God, daughter of God. Sons and daughters, children of God, born of His light, folks, coming out of our mother's dark womb. Because if you go by what your mama taught you, I mean, certainly your mama taught you some good things and your, and your papa taught you some good things. And, and God chose you regardless of what you, how you were brought up. He's chosen you, all of y'all who believe. You've been chosen. It's like if I, if I have this body and I have these little cells that do their job, if I don't have certain cells, my body's not going to function properly. This is why you were chosen. You, unless you see yourself in the micro, you're not going to understand the macro. Okay? So we need to get off our high horse. Calm down. Get off your high horse. Calm down and understand we are standing the Son of Man with courage and strength to overcome the wickedness in the world because this world has been um, oppressing us. 
And now I'm not talking about like, oh, you can't smoke indoors. That's oppression. You know what I mean. I mean, in that this world will want to brainwash you about things that are not real. Because they want to sell you something. And I'm not saying that buying and selling is not good when we do it with God. When we do it with order. Do you understand, folks? I don't want money that's come that comes from a dead child. No! God does not want us sacrificing children. That is against the law of God. This is why back in Jeremiah 3, he was telling Judah, like, y'all have been, you know, idolizing these sticks and stones. The same thing with Catholic Church. We can't be praying to saints. Que says so? We have to come directly as the son or daughter of God. Doesn't it say in the Bible, you come to God direct through the son, through, through Jesus? See, Jesus is in us and we are in Jesus. How can that be? Okay? If I have little cells, right? Little Or DNA. DNA, which you do too. We all do. Right? And they're like, hmm, whose child is this? Let's see who's like my son Alexander and Jacob. They're going to be doing like... Like DNA, like, I want to see if this is truly your son or if he was switched in the hospital. It's like, I know that's my son. I mean, you can just look at these two boys and know that, that, that I'm their mama. So, I am their mama. Nobody switched anything. No, because I know. I know. You know your child. Okay? So, in the DNA, it shows, oh, okay, yeah, this is a, that 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 person's child okay that's how it is that dna belongs to you know you that dna belongs to you that dna belongs to you that dna belongs to you specifically that is your code specifically for you So that's how we need to see ourselves. We are tiny parts of the whole. So he is in us and we are in him. Does that make sense? So we calm down, four become two become one. We've got four points on an X. The X is a cross, and this is the last letter for the Jews, and also in ancient languages, the letter Tav. It means all-encompassing, and it means truth. So, you can say that the letter Tav is like the Omega for the Greeks. Because remember, the first and the last, the last and the first, is for Greeks and Jews, Jews and Gentiles. And Gentiles are all who are believing men and women who are non-Jews. So the four points, it's, you have north, south, east, and west. You have east and west, we come down and we understand we get off our high horse and we stand before god but under him this is the difference we are not god we are his children as one so now we equals me when we look in the mirror of heaven Okay, so what looks like going up is also coming down. Okay, so that's when the four became two. When we calm down, come down, 
and we now we've got we equals me okay looking in the mirror of heaven so we were lifted up 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 and when you look at the letter gamma it looks like this and from the inside it looks like that like that so that's how that same gamma is also dalit gamma dalit is that's where our transformation occurred when we went through that when we go through that door we go into he which is letter five so three and four is that's where our transformation occurred three and four is the same from the inside we are one ahead from the inside there's that problem mathematical problem that's um like three n plus one and it always ends up in four two one four two one no matter what number you choose it's like a cycle that once you get to four you know that it's four two one four two one no matter how many steps it takes once you get to four is four two one and that's it it's a it's it's that little loop and that's the truth four two one one the thing is we at this point we went into he and he into us simultaneously the universe is always expanding and always returning always expanding and returning so when when you think of scattering scattering is um you know, like I said, multiplication and division. How can multiplication and division mean the same? This is the thing is we went up, up, up into he and he into us. Jesus is in us and we are in Jesus. Because when, when the cells divide, cell division, right? Cell division is like they divide and they divide and they divide. Really, what they're doing is they're multiplying, right? Or it's like cell division. And then, okay. So scattering, it's like, like this, like it's coming. It's coming. It's coming down. Scattering. It's like a, ah, scatter rain. Okay, it's raining down, raining down. Okay, all the messages, the message of God. And that's what we're going to be doing to the people, the next generation. When we come down, we're going to be delivering, delivering to the children. You know, because they're going to be taking over. So, back to numbers. When Moses chose Yeshua, Yeshua. Because we're the military, we're the army, the vast army that was lifted bone to bone in the valley, raised, okay? Hua means heard, understood, acknowledged. And yes, always yes in Christ, no matter how many promises, always yes in, in in Christ we have to be in always yes no matter how impossible it seems it's possible it is possible with God it's possible in Christ is possible now you understand I am here to prove to you that God is real I don't play games no I don't have time to be fiddling anymore 
All right. So, I'm not a public speaker. No. I'm a faithful daughter of God because I am his witness and I am his messenger and you are too. You are witnesses and messengers. And we're going to be delivering all that we have all that we have gathered and received when we were lifted. We're going to be delivering and delivering people. You see, we're going to be the deliverers. Woo! By the grace of God and His mercy on us, we are going to be delivering. Isn't that good news? That we are going to all be delivering people. Just like we've been delivered. Just like we have been rescued and just like we have been forgiven and lifted and received. God is a everything. A wonderful Papa. And he's our husband too. And he gets jealous when we go out there looking for other gods. What other God is going to save you? What other God is going to provide for you? And what other God is going to give you the, the knowledge and the wisdom and the true, the true knowledge and truth? You're going to get lost because you don't know where you're going without the true God. <clears throat> We don't need to be praying to saints and praying to 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 sticks and stones and such. God is here. God is here. And here, these things are connected. God has given us. You know, he gives us true knowledge. But it's, it, it, uh, we had to have a transformation of the heart. Without a transformation of the heart, when you have a cold, stone, hard heart, this is hard too. And you're stubborn, just like you are here hard and cold, you're going to be stubborn. And narrow-minded, you're like, because you cannot prove, right? Is the stubbornness. So, that mathematical problem, if you will, for a lack of a better term, which is truth, it's like 3n plus 1. Now, n is, means number, but also Yeshua, Joshua, chosen by Moses to be the next leader, to lead the people in the, to the promised land. He was the son of Nun. Son of Nun is Nun, letter Nun. Letter Nun, um, letter N, is also snake, but also fish. Because of the way it moves. Remember that Moses and Aaron's staff would turn into a snake. And the way to lift it was, you know, just lifting it up. And, and Jesus says, you know, that, that the son of, son of man with courage and strength is going to be lifted like Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness for a while. The wilderness. And Paul, he fought with beasts in Ephesus. Wild beasts. Humanity is a, is a tough, tough kids, tough children of God sometimes. Some are so easy, some are so very tough. But God gives us what we can handle. He has equipped us. So nobody can fool us. No devil can fool us. When they start talking about math and science and chemistry and physics, we're like, please. I already know. You know, with God, you can know 
all that stuff. That's exactly how the kids are going to be like, they already know. They're, they're, they're going to be so much smarter than us because we are going to deliver our children. We don't want our children to be oppressed and, and enslaved. No. We are here because God has given us the Holy Spirit to get it done. Woo! Yes, we are. Well equipped and we have true knowledge that comes from God. Because some of these mathematicians, they, for, for as, as, as intelligent as they were, you know, they just couldn't get it. They just couldn't get that, hey, with God, with God, there was this wonderful mathematician, okay? And I'm not going to be mentioning names, but I'm just going to, I'm just here to tell you that that was not the Paul, okay, that, that, that I'm talking about. The Paul, my foundation is Paul. Paul and Jeremiah. And I know that Jeremiah is not one of the twelve, but he is in our foundation. Oh, yes. In Isaiah, in Ezekiel. We have been built with a solid foundation so that no man and no evil can fool us. I said humanity. And we need to teach this to our children. So that they will continue with this truth. And it's only going to get better and better. And catch momentum. Because it was such a rough, rough road for us. Because of our stubbornness. Remember that a thousand years is like one day with God. And he's looking at these children like, oh my Lord, look at that. You know, so you get them haciendo. Huh? What, like one day with God is a thousand of our years. Like ancestors and ancestors and ancestors of doing the, the, the stupidity of looking for other gods. And you know, um, doing all kinds of uh, wickedness and, and uh, orgies and child sacrifice. Que es eso? Huh? Que es eso? And... Uh, stealing from one another instead of god is like I've been, i'm here i am here you know sending you messages through the prophets and all of the people that that were before us it, and it's like you have the book this mathematician said oh you you know you can find some of the most wonderful you know uh mathematical you know just uh revelations in the in the book but he didn't believe in god so he believed in the book but he didn't believe in god that just don't make no sense like dr Budley says and so you know the only bob see this is funny because my first husband his name is robert but he used to go by Bob when he was younger, way before I met him. And when I met him, he said, please don't ever call me Bob. And I was like, well, I didn't know Roberts were called Bob. But, you know, his name was Bob. And, um, you know, um, the painter Walter Anderson went by Bob. And I really like Walter Anderson because he, he, he was a wonderful, you know, gifted artist and he was misunderstood even by some members of his family and he saw he saw you know some he had just a beautiful you know beautiful eye you know and was gifted and was able to to paint you know the what he saw and it was just a beautiful point of view you know and um he didn't like people because people can be gossipy and they can be mean to one another he didn't want to be around people he wanted to be with nature one with nature and he was always searching searching for god you know he was searching and god forgives god forgives his children and he you know he 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 just uh 
you know, can see right through us, you know, and, and God knows that Walter Anderson was a good, a good man. So he forgives us. And uh, Bob, Dr. Bob Udley, I came across Dr. Bob Udley when I was living on Carlisle uh, in Mobile in 2018. I was just like, you know, scanning through and trying to find, you know, somebody to, that I could, it, it, nobody was, I was just not listening to the right person. And I was like, no, 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 that's not it. That's not it. And when I heard Dr. Bob Udley, I said, this is it. This is it. You want the best translator of the word of God? Dr. Bob Udley is the best translator of the word of God. The best. The most honest, the most enthusiastic, the most energetic and passionate. And has shared so much with everybody. The word of God. He has given you so much. And that's how we need to be. When God gives you, you know, that it reveals something to you, don't keep it. Share it. Don't sell it. Share it. God wants you to give it just like he gave you. We can't be going to the grave with this stuff. What good is that going to do to anybody? What good is it going to do you to be greedy? Yes, you can be sharing your husband. No, you can be sharing your wife. You cannot be sharing your, you know, personal stuff. And your children are your children for, for you to take care of that God has given you your gift. A family is a gift. But share the word of God and the love and all the revelation that, that he gives you. Okay? God is speaking to us all the time. We just tune God out with nonsense. Oh, we want to see what so-and-so is doing, you know, in her home. And all these things are wonderful. Yes, if we're going to be teaching some something good to one another, that's wonderful. Entertainment is good. Comedy is good. Drama is good. Music is good. Wonderful. You know, but we don't need to be prioritizing that to God. Because if we all did that at that rate, we'd just, you know, get lost again. So we all need to be first and foremost, you know, listening to what God is telling us and then doing our music, doing our art, painting, uh, um, speaking, whatever your gift is, do it, writing, you know, your God-given gift, serving in the way that you know, but as long as you do it with God. With God. You don't have to be talking about God all the time. Like, oh, oh, yes. And hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No. You, God knows. God knows when you praise Him in the in the spirit and in truth. is by loving one another. Genuinely. That's what, what He means. Okay? So if you put Jeremiah 3, Revelation 21, and um, Jeremiah 31... And also where Jesus tells that Samaritan woman, woman, one day you're not going to be praising God up in that mountain or in Jerusalem because you yourselves, folks, you yourselves are the new Jerusalem. We haven't lifted and received more for our less. Okay? To come back down to deliver with what we've been given. The rest of the body that we're part of is a different cycle, okay? This is a new generation. We need to do it. Woo! Yes! With God and truth and with Paul and Jeremiah and all of our apostles from Peter to Paul. And see, I, I was seeing these P, 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 P at the top level. Okay, because it's for past, present communication and also for patience and persistence. You've got to be patient. You know, like Mahatma Gandhi, you've got to be able to withstand sitting for a long time. But you also have to be persistent. Nonviolent, like Dr. Martin Luther King, but you've got to be persistent. You've got to be persistent because if you're not persistent, you're not going to accomplish that change that needs to happen because that transformation of the heart. And Dr. Martin Luther King, thank you to Dr. Martin Luther King. Yes, 
He was a man of service and dedication. And he's not dead. No, he lives in us. He lives in Christ and we are in Christ together. We need to stop thinking that the, 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 the people are dead. No, these, these faithful people, they're not dead. They're alive. Just like when we leave this world physically, we're going to be in the body of Christ in, in, with our children. We're going to be in there because we've delivered them. We are delivering. Delivering. There's a river born to be a giver. Keep you warm, won't let you shiver. His heart is never going to wither. Come on, everybody. Time to deliver. See, everything we write, you see, what we write today, what we write and what we write today will be. Yes. Just like, um, what is that REM song? You know, choosing my confessions. Yes. It's just like that. What we write today. So we, when we make movies, we don't need to be making movies about, you know, like in the future, like everything destroyed. Que es eso? Have some, have some enlightenment. You know, we can't be giving that to the children. Like, okay, this is what the future might be like. That's what you want it to be like. We need to write it, write it, and write it right. With God, yes. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. My Papa is here to stay. Thank God for God and thank God for coffee. Woo! I just love my Papa and you should too because Papa delivers. Yes, he delivers you and you're going to deliver the next generation. We are the body. Until we see ourselves as micro, we're not going to understand the macro. Okay, the universe is always expanding and always returning. Always expanding and always returning. Okay, because it's like this. Far away, and you look and you're like, oh, wow. Woo, I am found. I found myself. When you look for God, you will find yourself. And when you look for yourself, there you will find God. In our hearts, our box, this is the ark, folks. The ark of the covenant and in us. Thank God. Yes, the transformation of the heart. See? Isn't that a wonderful thing? A wonderful gift of life? All right. Have a good day, y'all. Oh, son of none. Yes, yeah, son of none. So that you know your numbers, what they mean, because because each letter has a number value so nobody can fool you you know it's like oh yeah we're so intelligent with our math and our science and our chemistry and our physics is it i don't know that please